we go. So as I was telling you guys, uh, for the people around 20Q, I wanna see at least three right, 15Q, five right, 10Q, seven right, and five Q, nine right. Otherwise you're out of the class. <laughs> Q, <laughs> Nick says as he looks straight at me. <laughs> uh, before we even go over any of the problems, how many do you think you got right? I just have to guess right now. If you have to place a wager, six or seven. Six. I think I got seven. Yeah. Seven? Seven? Mm -hmm. Six, maybe. I think I'll get to stay in the class. You got nine? I hope. I'm you got nine? Class, yeah. I don't know. Uh, All right. How many do you have to get to ten, ten, ten Q? I want to see seven. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and Q, I want to see seven. So again, all these are opening problems. They're all black to play. They all have to do with uh, correct direction to find here on the board. Um, this first problem is actually the most philosophical and one you could probably debate the most. Okay, mm. but I, I certainly want to show you the move that you know my pr professional teacher, you know, taught me to play. Um, and it, I think it's generally regarded by most professionals as the best move here. Although you can always experiment and you know go beyond that. Um, many of the other moves came in and out of style at different times. Um, there is pretty much now at this point one, I'll say, standard practice kind of move. Uh, let's do a vote. Let's see. Let's let's just see what you guys got. Who thought it was number one? Raise your hand. Oh, a lot of hands. You got four, or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Almost ten people. Number two. No twos. You guys hated two. All right, three. One three. Two threes. And number four. One four. Lost the though. Majority does in fact win here, okay? <laughs> but before we talk about why, let's talk about the other moves, okay? So let's, let's, let's review some of these other moves. Number four is actually probably the second best move. If you're gonna play another, a move other than one, I think this one's probably the most accepted. Uh, and again, why is this good? Well, it makes two five space extensions. <clears throat> what do we like about five space extensions? Uninvadable. You can't, easily, you can't easily yeah, make a base. It's, it's hard for white to make a base <laughs> in here, right? Yeah. White can't make a base in a five space extension. Really efficient. Because normally we think of a base as you know, the two stone, two space extension, right? And there's just not enough room for white to do that, right? White comes up and bumps into one of these other stones. So uh, not enough room to make that kind of extension without touching black. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna play one of these that's not one, I do like four, right? It's just efficient and um, for that matter, you know, it, it unifies all your stones. So that's cool. Is that uh, kind of more defensive than offensive? Yeah, it's 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 a little bit it's a little bit quirky. Yeah. Because when white plays here, white has essentially enlarged one side of the board, right? What side of the board did white make big make biggest? This side. And because this side is biggest, right? This side, this side actually has one more line of territory now between these two stones, right? Compared to these two, compared to these two, compared mm -hmm. to these two. This is the direction of play. This is the biggest side of the board, literally, right? Because it's the biggest difference between the two stones. Now the question is, which one of these do we want to play? If we want to play on the biggest side of the board, we actually have two options here. And in general, and this is, this is sort of a general rule, an approach against a 3-4 stone is worth more than a 4-4 stone. This is, we're talking like a fraction of a fraction of a point though. Okay, but just in general, we do value the 3-4 connections a little bit more because white can make an easy enclosure. And this is generally regarded as a very strong formation for white. Dan knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's a little bit harder for white to make points here because even if white plays this, black can still play this, or even just this directly, or things like this, and really have no fear and no problem without, with living. But over here, this, this basically solidifies the corner with one move if black has no other stones around here. So we care about this three, four stone quite a bit. And why do we play it high? Why is it on the fourth line? It's consistent with these, right? Yeah, it's, 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 these stones are very flexible. They're interested in the middle and the sides. We're not interested in invading at this point. We're interested in finding a move that works with the rest of the stones on the board. So we want to play high. That's it. That's how we get to this move. So, you know, those of you, I think the one person who said four, you know, that's okay. It's acceptable. Um, but for the vast majority of you, I think most of you guys found that. I tend to play the four there when I'm feeling like you know, powerful guy. And yeah. I feel defensive. Okay. But this would be more of an offensive. This, it, well, it's, it's balanced, right? It's both approaching white, it's breaking up the white side of the board, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, still, it's still defensive in the, set, in the sense that it's, out, it's an outside move, mm -hmm. right? It's not like it's a direct invasion of anything, right? It's still looking to the outside. And if white plays this way, so forward. we actually have a, a choice. We can block this way, or some of you might know the avalanche. And we can play an avalanche type sequence. 
going to do that this morning. Something like this. <laughs> and we can actually use this very directly. There's many, many variations. That's probably this, hmm. not the best one to show you, but that's one of the things that can happen. Okay? You guys got it? You understand Big, the concepts here, right? <clears throat> biggest side of the board. White told you which side was biggest. We're just playing the biggest side of the board. We're approaching a 3-4 stone because that's the easiest stone for white to make territory. And we're playing high so it works with these two stones. There's only four stones in the problem, but look how many go concepts we just employed. <laughs> it's amazing. All right, problem B. Almost the same. Almost the same. Mm. Almost the same. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What's the difference here? It's the other 3-4. It's the other 3-4. Does this change anything? No. Yeah. What, what, for, all right, so here, let's do a poll first. Who says it's number one? It's the same kind yep. of move as it was before. <laughs> Still most of you, like 10 people. All right, who says it was number two? Nobody, like the same before. Number three? One, two people. Hey, that's like the exact same, except different people this time. <laughs> <laughs> and number four? No, yeah, same thing. No one? No one number four, okay. So let's talk about this. Number four here, I will say, is actually significantly worse than the previous number four. So the question is why? Because it just gives white too much this opportunity. This is sort of more unambiguously like you gotta approach this, because now it's actually developing from your stone. Yeah, look, this this is the biggest side of the board, right? Mm -hmm. Who can develop here? <coughs> Both players. Both players. Very, very important. And when we play the move like this, we're saying we're interested in developing this whole side of the board. Do you know what white's immediate next move is going to be? There both to reduce how far this can come off and to play on the, the biggest side of the board. And white's actually winning this game, right? This is, this is, this is a winning position for white. It's black missing opportunity. I mean, I would, if, if this is a professional game, you might even say like white's a good three to five points ahead at this point. That's how big this move is. That doesn't sound like a lot, that's actually a lot. <laughs> for only four stones on the board. Yeah. I mean, that are, that are completely undeveloped, that's a lot, right? Just to be able to say that white has this definite advantage already on the board. Um, this move is the correct direction, but the spacing just feels weird, right? It doesn't, it, it, white can still come in here and break this up. White can still make the corner enclosure. It's, it's just kind of odd spacing. But this is probably, if you're going to play another one of these, this is probably the second best response that you can have. But it still just feels funny based on the other moves. Three is just completely ignoring the biggest side of the board. It's saying, hey, I have these two stones over here. I'm not interested in developing them. Hey, we have the biggest side of the board over here. I'm not interested in playing over there. I just want to break white up. Well, white doesn't really have anything anyway. I mean, this is, white's stone is very low over here. So it's not like white's trying to take a lot of points over here yet. Unlike you, you have to high and high. A common theme we're going to see today, whenever you want to develop points, whenever you want to play, you know, to get, you know, rack your score up, build a moyo, develop outside influence, we're going to see lots of moves on the fourth line. Whenever it's time to play defensive or play safety first, where are we going to see the moves? Third line. Third line, right? Third line defensive, fourth line building, right? Build on the fourth line, defend on the third line. Over and over and over again. So at this point in the game, we're not really interested in defending. Like, there's no reason to come over here yet. We want to think building. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is like the only move. And I think 100% of pros will agree this is the best move. They might not play it for some other reason. Maybe they want to they want to play another game because they know their opponent and their opponent really likes to invade, so they want to prevent him from ever invading. So they play moves that do that. Or maybe the opponent really, really um, hates having to build a big moyo. Maybe their opponent, so they're just going to let white take a big moyo. Maybe they, maybe there's a personality or an artistic reason or some other reason. But basically, everyone in the world agrees this is the move. Okay. You can always be creative and go. You can express yourself. You can play other moves. But just know that that's, that's your starting place. Feel good? How many people are two for two? Okay. Almost half. That's good. All right. Board number C. Let's do a little poll. <laughs> How many people got number one as their answer? Nobody? One? You got one. How many people said number two? We got three. I think we'll set number three. We got, looks like, wow, this is five. Looks like five, much more divided. How many people set number four? Two, three, wow, four, wow. So close, close, much closer than the last problem. All right, let's talk about them. 
You ready, Brandon? Uh, I'm scared, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what do we like about this move? It's the biggest side. It's the biggest side in terms of points. Mm -hmm. Right? So, but although actually this is the same size over here. Oh, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. So this and this are probably about the same if we're just looking at terms of raw if points, raw sides. sides. Bigger for both players is better, right? Um, in theory, yes, but again, there's, there's other considerations. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed. Uh, what does number two try to do? Let's talk about number two. Seal. It tries to seal white in. What is white going to do here? Ignore, Ignore you. Side. Oh, no, white, white will probably respond, I think. Really? Okay. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think white will respond. <clears throat> I think you just stand up, cut that stone off. Yeah, we could just say, hey, do you really like that stone? Mm, okay, yeah. Mm. And if black is blocks, I can say, hey, do you really like that stone? <laughs> and I can say, hey, do you really like these two stones? Because I'm going to come at you this way. And if black tries to fight over here, maybe we do something like this. <sighs> it's, we're already in a, in a fight. In other words, this move might have been an overplay. <laughs> Fair enough. It's trying to do a lot, right? We're trying to seal white completely in the corner. But white, white doesn't like to be sealed in the corners. White likes to break free. So it's not necessarily a bad move, but we're not really sure what it's going to get us. It's very, very unclear as far as what's going to happen. And uh, I sort of thought I recalled something like that from some example you showed us. <laughs> oh, there's, there's definitely a time to do that. Yeah, this right? was it. Uh, <laughs> this, this was not it. <laughs> this was not it. The answer is definitely going to be over here. So before we pick a move, <laughs> half oh, no. staying in the class. Most of the people here, fifty percent chance. I haven't told you which one is correct though. <laughs> Keep that in mind. So why does the correct move need to be over here though? Because we have a floating group with no base. Yeah, floating group with no base. Mm -hmm. There are times and go where you want where you can play the biggest move. There are times and go where you need to play the urgent move. The last two boards, all we've cared about are, is the biggest move. This is a time where you need to play the urgent move. What makes a move urgent? If your Sides. opponent can ruin it in one move. Well, if you're, sure, if your opponent can ruin it in one move, that makes it's something urgent. It's going to decide the strength or weakness of a group. Usually. That's right. Usually we're talking, about, we're talking about groups and whether or not they have bases and eyes. Well, I think it's, it's a move that you have a limited prospect for taking. It's urgent because you might not get a second chance. You mean you have to say in terms of the timing, the prospect? Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think but that's true for any move on the board, right? Well, um, you know, if white wants to jump into either of those corners, you don't necessarily have to respond right away. But if white closes into that black group, oh yeah, well, it, 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 it's, it's 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 a move that if white plays, you will have to respond. Yeah, right. It's that I think it's that it's that kind of a move. And if white attacks us here, do we have two eyes yet? No. no. How about now? Mm, nope. Nope. <laughs> if we play here. We can just keep poking at this thing. We can start just it's very sad. attacking mm -hmm. this thing. Yeah, it's, I mean, black's not dead. Black has to play here immediately. Actually, black should probably play there first. This is, this is a very, very aggressive attack. White shouldn't do this without any other support yet. But you can see that white can poke this thing, right? And if white has any other stones in this area, they're going to get really valuable really quickly. So we need a base. And that way white can't attack us. It'll help us reduce the effectiveness of white making anything over here. It might even put some, put some pressure on this corner. What's the move to make us the best base? Three. three. Yeah, it's three. Now why three? Why is it third line? Why is it not fourth line? Third line safer? Yeah. Cause yeah, and who has, who has all the friends around this group? Yeah. White. When white has all the friends around here, <clears throat> do we need an offensive move or a defensive move? Defense. Defensive means we're playing third line. Is it, is it short-sighted to think that the reason, oh, the reason I chose the fourth line is because I'm playing high everywhere else on the board? So This is, this is almost good reasoning. Okay. <laughs> the problem with, with this here is that we're no longer dealing with a single stone. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with an entire group. Yeah. Okay. And so that's the difference. So now let's say white plays here. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So now what do you want to do? Uh, that's true. Um, want to come back and play this? 
Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> right, that's fine. <laughs> Is the point that if it kind was just of, yeah. one stone, you could just run it? But if it's a group, you can't run because it'll get split. Well, even in that other just in the other board over here where we have the high stone, there are Joseki that makes a group with that high stone sticking out. Right. But or sorry, yeah, makes a base. Sorry, with that with the high stone sticking out. So when 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 white responds to us, we're going to play moves that essentially allow us to make a base easily. Here we've already played a Joseki. We already have high stones, right? We've already we already have some influence in the center. Sure. What we need is a base. Sure. Yeah. So that's that's the difference here. So that's why we play third line here, right? We're in the middle of white. Whenever you play on your opponent's side of the board, nine times out of ten, when it comes to finishing the Joseki, you need to play third line, right? You need to play a defensive move to make that base. To dig into that side of the board. Okay. Cool. No questions? That's good. Let's go to the next board. All right. This one, I'm going to say, I think, I'm going to bet 75% mm, of you got it wrong. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, there's two of the last one, right? <laughs> oh, I guess it was. Well, no, not quite. Not quite. We got more than 75% of that one. Wrong. No, more than no, less than seventy five percent got it wrong. Sorry, yeah, more than twenty five percent got it right. Now you're having it, it looks like guess the numbers got switched. Mm. I, feel, I feel like it's like a common, like a very common position, though. It's a very common position. Yeah. That's why we need to talk about it. Um, so okay, let's do a quick poll. Let's just see if I'm if I'm right. How many people think it's number one? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, five people. How many people think it's number two? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four. How many people think it's number three? Raise your hand. One, two. How many people think it's oh, three? For, sorry, for number three. How many people think it's number four? No one for number four. Oh, I put one. 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 <laughs> I got one. I'm trying to remember what I put. <laughs> All right, so I'm not too far off, but I am. But it is better than 75%, I suppose. But wait, how many people are here for? <laughs> I'm guessing it's not one. <laughs> Actually, there's 13 people here. Did you get a one? Uh, I'm gonna give you the answer first, and then we'll, we'll see why the others work. <laughs> okay. Let's do that. And the reason why I'm, I'm betting this was a harder one is because you have to know something about Joseki in order to get this right. You have to know the pattern. And this is a very, very common occurring pattern, which is why I put it on here. Mm. Number two is the correct answer. And this doesn't make sense, right? Because it looks like, hey, we have a stone over here. Yeah. This is the biggest side of the board. Clearly, we want to make a wall this way. Well, watch what happens. Continue playing out Joseki, continue building our wall. We made a nice wall over here. Guess where white, guess whose move it is? Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. <laughs> Third line, defensive. <laughs> All right, white comes there, and now our whole side of the board that we had big dreams of is useless. <laughs> so again, the reason why this problem is hard is because if you thought this way, your sense of direction is good. You're like, hey, I want to build a wall towards my side of the board, my corner. But the Joseki doesn't end with you getting Sente, right? It ends with the next move is white. So you can't block that way. Otherwise, it's just going to be completely worthless. White gets your corner and your side of the board. I get nothing. Wait a minute, indeed. Let's go back. Oops, that's there. Let's look at number two. Let's compare. So I'm going to block this way. And, and I'm just going to tell you. This appeals to me because I'm always thinking split white, split white. So it kind of appeals to me. Uh, it I does know. when you don't have. If, you, if Black Lord has a stone here, yeah, then yeah. splitting white is wrong. Oh. That wall was glorious, right? Yeah, if we already yeah. have this over here, you want to pff, make it that giant. Just take it all. But if you don't have that stone, you have to play this way. This is a Joseki this way. Again, we're going to make a wall facing this way. really needs one more move here. That's the move in order to make this group live and get out of the corner. And now it's Black's move. This is a big difference in terms of who has Sante. And Black can actually come over here. And now we're using a wall facing this direction. That's the correct direction. If White already has a bunch of stuff over here, then maybe... You shouldn't have pincered him. Yeah, we probably shouldn't corner. have played that. <laughs> probably shouldn't have played this to begin with. So you see, this is probably was the wrong move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a different board situation. Yeah. But when you play this move, when you play this pincer, this is what you're expected to do. This is, this is what every Go player is going to imagine in their head, the resulting shape right. being like. So, in, in a sense, what we've done here 
is the initial idea of someone blocking white. We've given that up and said, fine, white, go ahead and do that. We're going the other direction. That's right. That's right. It's, this is about choosing which direction you want. Yeah. But just based on that corner invasion, you have to know who's going to get the next move coming out of it. And if you use the stone that you pincered with, if you, go, if you cut that off, you're going to get sun tape. If you go against that stone, if you try to use the stone as part of your wall going that way, white's going to get sun tape. So it's just, it's, again, this is a trickier one because it's not just an opening problem, it's also a Joseki problem. So I kind of lied. <laughs> All right, let me just put it back to how it originally was. Um, people who said four, that's a fine thought, but white's actually just going to play here. Ooh. Now, <laughs> yeah, I, keep that and yeah, white, white's going to get a bigger down. corner, and all this is going to be destroyed. So, so you're really only getting this. This extension is much smaller than this whole side of the board. Mm -hmm. So it's really not effective. Okay. Do you guys see? It's a, it's a little bit Joseki dependent. Again, this is this is probably one of the trickier ones, for because you have to know that little extra bit of knowledge. So far, so good. Hmm. All right. Next row of boards. Mm -hmm. We're nearing the halfway point. All right. So we got four interesting moves that are kind of spread much further spread apart than the previous couple boards. We thought it was number one. Nobody. What's the idea behind number one? Is there an idea behind number one? Uh, capping. If there's any reason to play it, it'd be edge of two moyos, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it, look, it looks like black's trying to make something really big here. And we want to limit white. So maybe playing here is an okay idea. It turns out it's the wrong move. But sometimes that's appropriate. Okay? It's a real move. Who said number two? Nobody? Kind of. Ki kind of. Rohan says kind of. <laughs> How do you kind of say number two? Is it like 1.5? <laughs> yeah. That's what he thought originally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this move looks good. It looks a lot better than it is. What's the problem with this move? It's too small. Three. <sighs> three. The problem is three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Black is trying to make this bigger, right? Yeah. What's the problem with making this bigger? It's not safe, secure. Yeah, white already has another stone over here. Yeah. White will just eat this in the middle and just go frolic in the middle of your paradise, right? <laughs> yeah, it's literally like you trying to expand your, your house bigger and bigger, but every time you do, you forget to actually like remove the rats that are living in it. So you're just, you're just making a house bigger for the rats. <laughs> White's a rat, by the way. <laughs> we haven't figured that out. Four, again, not a bad move, but there's a rat in our house. <laughs> What do you need to do? Extinguish the rat. <laughs> yeah. Make him run. Chase it around a little bit. <laughs> yeah. okay. Need to go there. Need to go there. And this does a couple things. Not only does it put a lot of pressure on this white stone, it actually builds points for us too, right? I mean, this is, not, this is a dual purpose move. These are the kind of moves we really, really like. So it's defensive and offensive. Yeah, absolutely. So like hmm? my question is, if white were to run out, would black probably waste another move there, or would he just go and play four? Depends how white runs out, but probably black will continue. Harass. Continue to harass him? Yeah, it depend, depends okay. how white runs out. If, if white plays a move like this... Oh, actually, I will still harass white. I still want to poke at this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if white wants to play here, yeah, we're still going to poke at white, or at least respond to white. If white responds maybe one more time... Think it'll take four? Maybe, maybe one will now come, oh, come, two? Take, oh, yeah. come take two. I think two is better in this case. Okay, okay. Because what will happen if you take two and white responds, we'll come over here. We'll be happy over there. Oh, okay. Seems good. And later on, we're still going to look at how to attack this. Well, playing over here is also really getting really big, too, though. So white can't invade and run you out. So lots of possibilities, lots of possibilities. But either way, look at all the free stuff we got. And white has, this is worth zero points for white, right? Zero points. So it's like we played four moves that were all points, and white played zero. It's good. So when you're in this type of situation, this is what we call an urgent situation. When you have, or your opponent has, a lone stone in the middle of a bunch of your stones, having safety is really urgent. And if you're the person who wants to eat that stone, well, preventing that safety is worth a lot. Okay? 
So far, so good. How many mm -hmm. people got this right? Five, six, six, seven. All right, good. Next board. Oh, halfway point. How, what are the scores at? How many people are on, on pace to make their, their goal? Sir. One, <laughs> two, <laughs> oh, three, four, <laughs> five. All right, five people on pace. Let's see if the others can catch up. All right, let's do a vote. Who said number one here? Two. That was appealing. But... That was appealing, but no. Who said number two? Yeah. Five, six. Who said number three? That was appealing. To you get two. Who's number four? No one. I feel bad I didn't choose four now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so pretty. <laughs> uh, it looks so isolated. <laughs> let's go from worst to best. <laughs> four. <laughs> we'll start with number one. Oh. Oops. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> This, this looks good, but there are some problems here. Black <laughs> already has stones under you. First of all, yeah, you're, you're, it's very difficult for black to make a base here, so it may not be appropriate right now. And you could get split. And you can get split. And white just might play here right now, right, mm -hmm. right away. Are you going to fill in your hole, or are you going to let white eat this? Well, if you take the time to play here. Now, when white splits you, this is kind of a big deal. Like, this is, this is getting really scary really quickly. And if you think, hey, this don't, I know this Joseki. We just saw this Joseki over there on that table. Well, this time white blocks is this way. And this is really, really good for white. The good news is you have a corner. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 White has a nice wall facing this way. This stone is... I don't know. It needs to grow wings. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this has a lot of development for white. Still Yikes. on this board. Mm -hmm. So it's really up to black to figure out how to reduce this. It's still a game. It's still a game. The game's not over. But white's, white's not unhappy here. So whenever you let your opponent use all of his stones on the board working together, we want to avoid that. Let's talk about number four. What do you think white plays here? Well, I think about this white, I'd say play on top of them, keep Kick. them on the side. Like here? Yeah. No, we don't want to do that. Well, okay. uh, because we're going to build a wall this way? Yeah. What's the problem with building a wall this way? Black already has a stone here. If white's going to respond locally, I would say you just play three. Yeah. And dig into black's potential. This is okay. Or, oh, wait, no, you can okay. kick. You can kick. Yeah, here, like here we can play more active. We can actually kick, do this. Kick. This is a move you should never do unless you're going to attack this stone directly. And we can attack it because we already have a stone here. If you're not going to attack this stone, don't play this move. So play something like this, probably here now. What do you want to do, black? Do you want to try to live small? Do you want to try to overextend? Yeah. Whatever you do, You're running. This is going to help me build up, and then if I can take this, how about this position? <laughs> hmm. A lot of potential for white, right? Yeah. So we don't want to go making another group in the middle of white if white can harass us and get all this big potential. Three. Really isn't too bad. It still sort of misses the point, right? Where white white really wants to develop this, and black wants to develop this, right? This is the most developable piece of uh, real estate on the board for black. This is the most developable for white. So it's an okay move, but this is playing at the point of two moyos, right? If white wants to keep developing this way, and black wants to keep developing this way. This is sort of like right at the intersection of those two. That's why this move is so important. It looks weird, right? It looks like it's, a funny it's move. It's like the boundary where it's... Yeah, it's a, it's, that's, the, that's the turf war. Yeah. That's where it's going on. And not only that, this move also starts threatening to activate this stone. If, uh, if white doesn't want to respond here, we can do things like this. We white let us, cut us get cut off here. If not, how about I keep expanding and now I'm basically inside of you, over here on your, your whole area. Yeah, I think white will respond. You think white will respond? Yeah. Well, if white is going to respond here, okay. move like here or 
here. Where are you going to cut there? Where you cut? Where's the cut? Oh, just maybe somewhere in here. But then oh, we'll cut this off. But then black could just keep yeah, pushing yeah. his moyo out. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe more like this or something. Like black could black would be fine sacrificing that stone if he could build the moyo that 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 big. Yeah, and the stone is actually really not dead at all. Okay. Like this stone is still totally useful later on if if this is how it ends. Um, but if, yeah, if we get a response, that means this move is sente, which means that was good. So yeah, this is just sort of a, uh, recognizing there's two developable sides of the board, one for black, one for white. You've got to find a point where they meet and play on that point. Good lesson? Yes. All right, next table, four left. Excuse me. Cameraman coming through. All right, for table G, who said number one? One, two, three, four, four, five. Who said number two? One, two, three. Who said number three? Nobody. Wow. Who said number four? One, two, three. I don't remember what I put. Wow. So pretty split between one, two, and four. Well, they're all, they all have merit. There's not a terrible move on this board. He's good. But... And this is the class about finding the best moves. So we want to find the move that does the most stuff. What does this move do? <clears throat> Prevents the enclosure. Crowds, crowds, white. Prevents white from developing this way and making a box this way. Right? We want to make boxes and go. It turns out squares are really, really efficient in terms of the territory, so we want to make squares whenever possible. So maybe white gets here and here and here, and white makes a giant square, and we're super scared of that. So we want to prevent that right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just about talk me into it. <laughs> this is too early. Oh. How many moves does white need to make of this giant thing? At least, At least three. three. More. At least three. We have time. It's not as important as you might think. Okay. Number three is a little more interesting. What does this stone do? So is that one white stone? Yeah, it puts a lot of pressure on the white stone. The problem is, is this is going to lead to a fight. White can play here, white can play here, white can even do some other things and start splitting and fighting over this corner. Uh, when we play a move like this, it's because we're trying to develop this. How developable is this for black? Not as long as white can play two. Yeah, as long as white has this move, there's not a lot of points here for black. So this move is playable, but we need to know how this fight's going to go, and we need to know we're going to come up with the next move, so even when the fight's done, we can come back and play and move around too. If we don't know that, we probably shouldn't play the pincer. We probably shouldn't start a fight. What if we play two directly? Now, um, white gets to break up this big side you're trying to make. White in there, maybe? No, 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 no. No. Check out this. Yeah. Check out this. Yeah. Black is projecting a lot of influence this way. He's on the fourth like line. Like fourth and fifth sides. line, yeah. Like fourth line and like a fifth line stone. Like there's a lot of potential going on right here. With one more move, black can pretty easily turn this into a lot of points and put a lot of pressure on this one stone. The stone. Well, even at this point, that stone can just make a base. And or make a base and Where? live small. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, you, you can live small. Or just, just, just run out. But... Okay, how do, you, how do you want to run out? And maybe either here or here. Okay, so here you're going to leave this cut? Now, like I said, or, or here, I'm not certain which okay. one, but okay, so then I just start running out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. How, like how said, many I'm points are you making? Not much yet. Okay, how many is black making? <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect? To yeah, so you're black six. still making thinks he, black still thinks he's making this. Black is still making this, and you've actually given black a wall now this way. So now this pincer actually starts looking really good. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> Two is called shusaku or something, right? Hmm? Two. Oh, this is just like a shusaku move. Yeah, this is the one shusaku plays. Most more we see this more often, mm -hmm. but here it's actually still very appropriate to play this one. 
because white has stones on both sides, so we want to stay strong. So won't white immediately make a base if you do that? Exactly. If we play here, white's going to play here or here. And in rare cases, maybe there. But probably there. It's probably so the move. in light of what you were just saying, if black makes that move, then this becomes an urgent move for white. Yeah, so, so here, here, here's the key. Black plays this first. This is the thing that sets everything into motion. Over here, this is actually is very nice spacing with this group. This is nice potential. What else does this stone do? It's yeah, now the stone can't make a base easily. Now the stone either has to dive in the corner right now or get out using one of these pre-approved methods by your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, if white gets out like this, this is fine. This is super fine for black. Black's still happy. Because does white have a base yet? No. No. White still has to work. And white can play moves that you know, start to make a base. We can even say, hey, white, you can make a base. Any more stones? But now black's going to come back here and now attack, do the whole same thing over again over there. And meanwhile, we've profited from here and from here, and we're still attacking. So the idea is we want to find, again, the core, core concept. How you are going to be able to solve this problem in your own games is you need to find a move that does multiple things. So what does this move do? Makes a base and... Yeah, it, it takes away white's base and it actually furthers our potential. And we know we have potential over here since we have two stones, right? That means there's black potential over here. So it takes advantage of that. So if it was white to play... Right now in this game? If it was white to play, it would then be the best move to do two base, two, to make a base right there, do you um, think? If, if I was playing this game, I'd play here. Oh, okay. I, I would actually play a three space extension. Okay. But that's because I'm greedy. <laughs> <laughs> and I also know that if black comes in here, well, now that I know black is trying to destroy me, I now know I can lean out here, play this kind of a sequence, and I'll just come back and say, I eat you. Yeah. But since it's black to play again, we want to make white uncomfortable. Always make your opponent uncomfortable. And if you can do it while taking points, you've won the game. All right. Okay. H. Did I get that one right? I think I did. Okay. What's Brandon's score? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Five. Oh. This table's very good. This table. <laughs> We got five. That's awesome. All right, three left. Three left. Who had number four? No one. Who had number two? Three. Who had number three? One. Matt. Who had number one? <laughs> yeah, one. One is super important here. Again, this is this is the what's urgent versus what's big. All of these moves are big. Why is this one urgent? Where white needs to play to make a base. White needs a base. Mm -hmm. Whose turn is it? It's white. <laughs> it's not white's turn. <laughs> white needs a base. And if white's going to run, the, if you think white's going to run these stones, be fine. You're right. White's going to be fine. But what happens whenever you run and don't take points when you're running? Who's getting points? Your opponent. Your opponent, indeed, sir. And just. How many free points did Black get? Probably an easy 10 more, plus still out. Got Sente. It's great. Don't let your groups run, OK? If they are in trouble, you must defend them. That's it. That's as simple as it is. Seems good. So it's White's move. White can actually play here or here, depending on your mood. If you want to be defensive, you play there. I would play here. There are some people who might argue this is actually better, because you have high, high. And uh, in this kind of scenario, you could say, well, now all my stones are working together. But that's, that's a higher level discussion. I would just play here. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that's totally the argument I made over there. What's the difference? I know. I, well, 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 the difference is this is a more solid shape. Oh, OK, OK. Over there, this has more holes in it. OK. So you need to be more defensive. Fair enough. <laughs> we, played, we played this one. 
when we want to project. I'm just bitter. Yeah, yeah. Bitter. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's now this one has defects. Okay. So we, also, we, need to, we need to be more safe. Also, here, like the sequence he showed, you already have this extension, and then he played like this instead of trying to shoulder hit and like force black really low with this weaker connection. Yeah, the other the other move is an over an, a direct overplay. Right, right. Okay. So it's but I mean, there, there is there are again. Go is super flexible, right? Sometimes, sometimes the move you were taught was wrong actually is the right move for that situation. Fair enough. No, it makes sense now. I like the distinction. Cool. All right, easy. Last two. Yeah. Did yeah. No. Oh. Excuse me. Excuse me. All right. So we got number one. Stand up from the corner, check your corner, no one, no one. Who said number two, unite all your stones on this side. Who mm -hmm. said number three, reduce white on this side. <laughs> oh, a lot of people, one, two, three, four, five, six, six people. And who said number four, build a wall this way and keep white low. One, two, three, ooh, ooh. We have we have a, we have a rare instance where the vast majority of people are wrong. Oh, what? Why are we different than the other numbers? So, if number three is wrong. Which one is right? Four. It isn't say four. I was afraid of that. Movie. You were afraid of four. Why were you afraid of four? So it was my initial instinct to go four, and I just looked at it and I was like, "Oh, it's obviously four. But then I was like, "Oh, but what if white just comes in like right here? Then when? When? What's the what's the sequence you're seeing? Are you playing here? Does white come in here now? <laughs> Thanks. I'm a bad cameraman. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess you're right. I didn't think that went all the way through. What, so when, 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 when? I just want to know when. Are you going to abandon this now? Now do you come? Because this is a very, very sad corner for white. Yeah. Like they're totally not alive yet. Yeah. Still not alive. Yes, we have to be wary. If we're just going to build a wall this way, if white gets sente, white will just destroy our potential. Mm -hmm. But this is where you have to just do the couple moves of reading and decide, hey, when is my opponent going to have time to do all of that? So this is, this, is a, this is a problem with being afraid of everything. You only be afraid of things that your opponent has time to do. Fair enough. If your opponent yeah. doesn't have time to do something, don't be afraid of it. So there's a couple other principles in here that should help clue you in why this is a good move. What line is this stone on? Third. This stone. Third. This, lo this stone. Third. Okay, white has no potential over here. The only way white can get, get potential on this side of the board is by playing stones up, fourth and fifth line. Which is why I was thinking one. <laughs> Try to thinking one? Yeah, try to cry the mid a little bit and maybe come in down the side some. Um, maybe, but white just might now come over here. And white will build up territory this way by attacking. All right, so we're just going to nicely build this while you're trying to run. One is a big move. But not as big as... But, man, if we get this and white just responds normally, so here's a Joseki. Third, 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 third line. All of them. That's bad. If you ever have all of your sons on the third line on one side of the board, you've effectively said, I want to take all of this for as few as points as possible. <laughs> We don't want to do that. And not only that, black has later reduction moves like this. Right here, I go here. I just do the connection. This is really good for black. Yeah, there's really, I mean, yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can say white got 20 points. And if you count this, if you count your normal corner as five points, then white has 25 points. So clearly white's going to win this game. Is there any place on this board where we can get more than 25 points for black? Everywhere. Literally everywhere, everywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere else. 
the rest of the board is worth you know 200 points, right? There's 200 points that black has dominion over. So question. If you're black in this situation and you're pushing ahead of your opponent and he's on the third line, how do you just have Sente until you decide to stop doing that? Or well, well, I mean, I mean, in this case, black will end with Gote. Okay. At this point, white will probably just play this, and I'll be up to decide if we want to fix this cut. And if we do, now white will have to play a, a move over here, okay. probably over here. But that's great. Now I come back over here. If white plays over here, you know we can again just continue to build. Actually, probably it's have to attack it. Uh, this this was this was overzealous. This was probably premature. I need to respond over here first. Fair enough. After white, here, let me go back. I mean, after you make this exchange, after I, after you come I make back and take exchange, the star point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was, this was a little later. Sequence. Then you got this double wing thing going on too, essentially. Yeah. So after this, right, black plays uh, here, white plays here. Now this is the timing from black. Okay, yeah, that's what I was trying to ask. That's, that's the timing. Later on, if white goes and does something silly, now you reduce this more and okay. continue to build. Okay. And we can even just reduce, we can even just play this, right? Very simple way to mm -hmm. increase the scope of our moyo. Glorious, it's glorious. So whenever you see an opportunity where your opponent's being really defensive, right? Third line, third line, third line, you don't punish that by invading. You punish it by saying, take more of that, sucker. More third line for you. You love it. You love it. <laughs> more of it. That's how you punish that. Okay? Seems good. All right, last one. Okay. We have, I'm going to call this move the three amigos. <laughs> Who would like number one? Uh, one. Was Seth? Yeah, that was me. Yeah, so number two. Who's the number two? Carlos? Yeah, one. Who's the number three? No, yeah. it's the number three. All right, we don't have three. Change my mind. You changed <laughs> your mind. At what point did you change your mind, David? At the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> like within the last 30 seconds? <laughs> All right. Yeah, number four is the correct answer here. Yes. How many people said number four? Is the rest of you good for you guys? Why? Why, why, why? Because it it's Sente? It's Sente. It's the difference between... Not, it's not Sente. It's actually Gote. I mean, like, if, if white, like, if you didn't play and white took it... Oh, it's, it's, so it's reverse Sente. Yeah, of, like, you would have yeah. to respond, right? Yeah, so it's Sente for white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not Sente for black. White can either Tanuki here, or white will most likely play this sequence, which is still Sente for white. Try to do some defects in black's position. Okay. Um, which white likes. Uh, so it is white's sente. White will now play over here, actually, in this position. Um, but what if we don't do that? What happens? Like this, this looks okay, right? Black has a lot of potential here. This stone isn't dead yet, but it's very close to being captured. We have more central influence for black. Um, white just has, you know, these 10 points, 10, 12 points. So what happens if we don't do this? What happens if we do what our heart wants us to do? Two. White. And play two. White <laughs> turns, Fox. and now instead of having a wall, you have two weak groups. Yeah, so remember how we want to make squares and boxes? This move looks amazing, doesn't it? It's a yeah. giant box, we've won the game. That's how you would go, make a giant square. <laughs> provided one side doesn't collapse. <laughs> yeah, provided it's actually a square and not a Related what do you table. call it, the five-sided sided object, an inverted pentagon thing? <laughs> a house. <laughs> the inverted house shape. Three-legged table. Now we start to have a problem. We're, we're, we have to be very cautious of liberties. If we play too strongly here, there is going to be a fight coming. You better believe it. You want to take Ataris, that's fine, but probably not ideal. This group's in trouble. This group can easily get out, and you still have all these cut points. <laughs> what do you do, Black? And what do you do here? You cry. You cry. You probably do. And, and if we just say, hey, you know what? We, we're actually too weak to cut. That's fine. I like being submissive because, you know, it just feels how you should play Go. <laughs> so when White comes here, just going to say, no, I'm just going to take these points. I'm just going to take these points. 
these are mine. These are just mine. <laughs> That's all. Well, now, what did you just give away? A wall of mass destruction. <laughs> Check out the box that White is starting to build here. <laughs> I actually probably didn't see this first. Yeah, I saw the box has a walk-in cooler. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, black, black got a lot of points here, but man, this is very, this is a lot of potential for white. So, you know, black hasn't lost yet, but we're really sad. Yeah. We're really kind of sad. Because we could have had all that to ourselves, right? This is sort of like the meeting point of two moyos again, right? One way to think about it. If you think about white has a lot of potential this way, and black has a lot of potential this way, playing over here is really important. Making sure white doesn't push through is, is really big. It also felt like the only move that could be played, that white could play on the board, that you could not ignore no matter what. Exactly. Like, yeah. So, it, so you know it's important, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's that's what makes it urgent. Yeah. So it has that kind of a feeling to it. Okay. Do you guys add up your scores? <laughs> yes. Eight. Should we? Should we? <laughs> eight. Yes. Nice. Should we, should we do? Can anyone get ten? Can we get ten? Wow. Bravo, bravo. I thought you had to come out now. <laughs> nine or more. Nine I don't more. get thrown out on the street. <laughs> uh, nine or more? You get thrown out into the Wednesday classes. Yeah. How about eight? We got one eight. David? One eight. Two eights. Nice. Seven. One seven? <coughs> like I think I got about six or five. Yeah. Six or five, okay. <laughs> Not seven. How many, how many got six? One? Just one? Five? Five. This was this was like the fifteen Q level guys. Need five. I miswrote one, which might have gotten one right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Four. Four. You just say. Good. You're in deep. Three. Carlos. Oh, Carlos. I mean, I didn't do the first two. Oh, you got here. You got here like kind of late anyway. Yeah. Kind of sure. Two. Try ask two. <laughs> no. no. I got three. Good. You get to stay. <laughs> one. Zero? <laughs> Step into your hand glove. Not safe. Three, yeah. Oh, free, free. Okay, got Carlos it. Carlos distracted. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's very distracted. All right, so very good. Um, we'll do a couple of these over the next sort of sparks throughout the next couple weeks. Um, we'll, we'll, you know, I, ho I hope you found it to be very helpful as far as just sort of, you know, seeing board situations and then talking about what's important at this moment in the game. Yes. Um, that's, a, that's a thing that takes experience and just multiple exposures and... You know, it's 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 good stuff. It's good stuff. So, no more questions. You guys happy? Happy enough.